Hi race fans and thanks for joining us for another exciting episode of ADRP TV. On today's program we'll talk to Lucas Woodburn, Vice President of the Swan Hill Drag Racing Club about the exciting happenings up there this week. We'll also get a chance to catch up with Steve Petrovsky. Sit back, relax, enjoy the show and let's hear from our interview with Lucas Woodburn coming up now. All right, welcome back race fans. We're now very pleased to announce that we're going to be crossing to Lucas Woodburn, the Vice President of the Swan Hill Drag Racing Club. Uh, good morning, Lucas. Morning, Brett. How are things in sunny Swan Hill today? No, Swan Hill is going rather well. Excellent, excellent. Now, Lucas, the reason for our quick call to you today in your capacity as Vice President of the Swan Hill Drag Racing Club is you've had a very exciting day last Thursday and uh, we were wondering if you could fill our listeners in, our viewers in on a little bit of background what led up to that day and the, the great announcement and what happened on Thursday please. Yeah, um, basically the lead up to Thursday was about seven years ago um, the Swan Hill Drag Racing Club reformed um, after a sort of 10 to 15 year hiatus um, with the we re reformed with the objective to build a, a drag track, basically. Um, at the time, we were sort of thinking eighth mile, um, and we were well in the swing of no quarter mile track in Victoria at that stage when we reformed. And um, yeah, as we sort of kept going, that um, grew into a quarter mile, and we took the idea to the council with. Having Andrew and the Lamartina family, who are locals around Swan Hill, part of the Swan Hill Shire, and took the idea of a full fledged quarter mile to them, and it um, grabbed their attention rather quickly. No doubt, with uh, all of the efforts from the, the club and the Lamartinas, yourself, and all the individuals, you gave the council not a lot of option but to, to back you because of the, the passion with which you put forward the case. That, that's right. Like, we. we we did our homework and what we sort of needed to give give to them to for them to grab hold of the idea and we showed that it would be a great economical um, benefit to the town um, as well as it's going to feed our, our races another track. Excellent, excellent. So obviously it's like everything where there's government or large amounts of money involved, things take time and you guys have persisted. And uh, the fruition came on Thursday. Tell us a little about that very exciting day. That's right. Uh, so on Thursday, after going through a, a full feasibility study, which we actually undertook with Mildura Council, um, Northwest um, Motorsport Feasibility Study, it was, um, which got the green light, and then the business case, which also got the green light. Um, the we were given a promise, an election promise back in 2010 of $2 million from the state government to, to build a, a drag strip and once we got everything lined up it was, the yeah, funding was approved on Thursday. So we've um, got $2 million from the state government and approved funding um, as well as the council has put up $450,000 um, and then the club we've we're chipping in $220,000 worth of um, well, funding in-kind work, basically, is how we're doing it, um, which will be the majority of the earth moving for the, for the whole facility. Excellent. So you've secured almost $3 million to build a full quarter mile in Swan Hill, which is an amazing effort, and you were fortunate enough, I believe, to have the Deputy Premier up there on Thursday to make the announcement. Is that correct? That's right. So Minister Ryan, um, he flew in Thursday morning to make the announcement. Um, as well, we had Peter Walsh, um, who is the Minister for Water, I think. Um, he's actually our local member. Um, had them both there, as well as a full full reign of people from the Swan Hill Council, and as well as our club and the other user groups out Chisholm Reserve. Excellent. All right. So it looks like things are very much falling into place for you guys after a, a well-earned and hard-fought battle. So when are we? You talked about the earthworks. Obviously, that will probably be the first step. What what uh, situation are you in with that? Where are you up to? Basically, um, we're 
basically what we're where we're up to with that once the plans are all finalized um which is sort of we're talking within the next week or two they'll be all all finalized um the council then put it all to tender while the tender process is happening the club will be out there moving dirt leveling ground um we'll be making our own spectator mounds out of with all the earth moving um and that, that, those works, depending on um, machinery and that that we we get at the time, um, that, that could be two to three months worth worth of work. Okay, great. So the tender process is for the actual construction of the facility, and the the club is going to be the the earthworks prior to that. That's right. So the the funding is purely going to be paying for the construction of the site, and the club is doing all the pre preliminary works. At, Groundworks. Excellent, excellent. Now, on a slightly uh, more personal note, I see that after finally getting Bob out of the seat and getting yourself into the seat, it looks like you might have been kicked out by the minister yourself. Oh, that's right. We um, we sort of did a got the car ready um, the night before and got it out there for a bit of a, a photo shoot, and we said, well, it's ready to run. Who will we put in the seat? And well, everyone pointed at the minister and. He thought he was just getting in for a photo, and as he's getting in, we said, told him we were starting it. To which the reply was, "You, you are what?" And um, yeah, he he loved it. So you actually had the deputy prime, uh, the deputy premier of Victoria, sitting in your race car while two thousand horsepower were pumping out the pipes. That's right. That is awesome, Lucas. It's a it's yeah. a credit to you guys with what you've done up there. It's a great shot in the arm for for drag racing in this state and, and the country and I think also just the publicity that you're getting by making the you know, state government aware that this is this is a true sport and a professional sport with real families behind it like yourself and, and the other Swan Hill people. So uh, we'd love to congratulate you on the efforts you've made, the success you've had and we very much look forward here at ADRP to seeing the first tyre turning at Swan Hill Dragway. No. Thank you very much. We've, um, yeah, hard work is now paying off, so we're, we're pretty happy with what we've been able to do. Awesome. Thanks so much for your time, Lucas. Cheers. No worries, Brett. See ya. Welcome back, race fans, and hopefully you enjoyed that interview with Lucas, and you've now got a bit more insight into what's going to be happening in the drag racing world in Swan Hill over the next coming few years. Strap yourselves in. We're now going to switch to Sydney and a quick chat with Steve Petrovsky about his new awesome twin turbo Camaro. All right. Welcome back, everyone. Here we are today. We've got a very special guest on the line. We've got Steve Petrovsky, the driver of the now five second twin turbo 68 Camaro out of Sydney. Steve, thanks so much for taking some time out of your busy day. I know you're a, a businessman and a family man, so uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you, Brett. It's a pleasure to be on the phone with you, mate, um, to talk about our achievements that we did last weekend. Excellent. Thank you. So what, what I'd like to start with, Steve, is tell us a little about this Camaro. Uh, what what uh, brought it to your home and, and, how, and how does it work? Well, mate, it's, it's a bit of a passion. I've, I've liked the turbo scene. I, prior to this Camaro, I had a um, LS1 Ute. I had an SS Ute with an LS1 that ran 680. And um, we just got the bug from there. So we're kicking around one day looking over the internet with a cousin of mine, Nick, and we said we should go buy a ProMod car from the States. And, um, yeah, just talk them, talk them. So, yeah. We found this car in the east coast of America, this, this 68 Camaro. It's a, it's a hemi-powered type of engine twin turbo with a three-speed Rossler gearbox in it. Um, the car used to do half track. It's gone three nine to the half in the States. Um, we flew over there early last year. I looked at the car, fell in love with it, and we brought it back to Sydney. Um, on our first outing with the Camaro, um, testing it, and testing myself as well, I put it into the wall, just a light tag, tag the wall on the first test day. Okay. Yeah. And not a great start. Prepared, all that. You there? Yeah, not a great start. Yeah, not a great start, mate, but yeah, we came back at it, and um, it's a, this whole car's a bit of a family affair. It's, it's all me and um, three of my cousins, actually, we look after the whole car. I've got Bill, 
Perko, who's the, the tuner of it. Nicholas is a part owner in it. We've got our younger cousin Chris that um, turns spanners on it as well. Excellent. Well, as we know, drag racing, the most successful teams are family teams, so it's great to see a, a close-knit family all getting behind such a fast car. Yeah, mate, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, we keep it with the family, mate, yeah. And it's all pretty much Aussie done. we got a little bit of help from a, from a guy in the state, Dave Hans, helps out Bill a bit with a bit of advice and that, but, yeah, it's pretty much where Bill calls all the shots on it, and I steer it, pretty much. So, and anyway, Nick's going to jump in the hot seat eventually. Okay, so uh, let's hope his first outing is a little more auspicious than yours. Yeah, mate, yeah. And that, we ran a 5, um, 5.96 on the weekend at 2.53. Um, had a pretty soft tune in it. Had a 6.20 tune in it that we've done in the car prior to that. And we've done a gearbox change and we put a rock, pretty new roster in it. And um, by doing that, yeah, the car performed really well. Okay, now you said earlier that it's a, a roster transmission behind a Hemi. So can you... Expand a little on that. We're talking like a Brad Anderson KB uh, style engine. It's a Chuck Newton block, uh, CNC block with um, Noonan headed. Okay. Um, it's got small turbos on it at the moment. It's got 94 garrets on it at the moment, but we're going to step that up to 98 for uh, precision in the, probably in the next month or so. Um, yeah, it's got the three, it's got a ProTalk converter in it. Joe from ProTalk helps us out with the converter. And obviously Raf and now are on board they're giving us a hand with the gearbox side of things. Excellent. All right. Now, we spoke last week on our program to Paul, that guy, and he talked us through a little bit of the different nuances of staging these turbo automatic cars. How have you gone with the, the whole up on boost, brake pressure, bump in deal? Yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a, it's a lot to put in when you're, you're that nervous on the start line trying to remember all these procedures and trying to get them right, yeah. You know, you've got to pump your brake pedal up, get a bit of boost, uh, brake pressure up and bump it in and get your bulbs up and get boost up. It, it, it's a bit daunting, but the, the more you do it, the more seat time you get, the better you're going to become at it. And I think we're, we're getting it down pat now with the procedures and that. Excellent. Now, you said uh, that side of it you've got down pat. Uh, earlier in the week when I rang you to organise our interview, you said Ed, that the day, even though you ran a 596 253 PB, the day didn't really go down, Pat. Can you expand on that for our listeners? Uh, the day we were going to pull the pin on the tape, mate. We, went, we pulled the car out of the trailer and we went to go lift it up with the projects. The projects wouldn't work. We spent half a day just mucking around with the projects just trying to get the car up on, its, on the jacks, mate, to, to warm it up. We finally fixed them and we got the car ready to go out. We went out. We've done the burnout. Go to pull the car up. I go to put my foot on the brake. The brake pedal snaps. I had no brakes at all. So as you can imagine, that would have been real nasty at 253 if I had no brakes on it. It was definitely the right end of the track to brake the brake pedal, yeah, that's for sure. Definitely, mate. Uh, Nick, the poor, the poor guy, Nick, was coming to back me up. He was chasing me down to the other end of the track, thinking, like, if I'm playing a joke on him, trying to make him lose weight. Because <laughs> I couldn't pull it up. Just as well his family then, mate. Yeah, that's right, mate. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you've gone 596, 253 with a soft tune by your admission and also with the small turbos. I like the, I like the fact that you're calling those ones small. Um, you know, what, what is the ultimate plan for the car? We know that at the moment in this country, the turbo boys have got a bit of a, a, a lost area. You don't seem to have a class as such. What, what's your plan for the performance of the car? We just want to do a little bit better than we did last time, mate. Um, we're, we're a humble race team, you know. Just going out and finishing an actual meet, it's good for us, you know. And just to stay competitive with the other guys, I think there's, there's a couple of us now in the 590s. Um, I believe Zoran, with another Mustang, same type of engine as ours, has got well, just a little bit quicker than us. And um, Rob kept easy, easy in the 590s as well. Um, look... <sighs> In a perfect world, I'd like to run a 570, you know, I'd like to be down there, be in a perfect world, but whether we get there or not, it's another story, so... Baby steps. Baby steps, you know, we're just going to creep up, and we're, we're learning pretty much, every time we go out, we're, we're learning something new, and because we're doing it all ourselves, you know, that, that, that's held us, held us back a little bit. Oh, well, that gives you more, more success at the end and a greater sense of achievement, that's for sure. Well, definitely, mate, yeah. Steve, can you just, uh, I'm not sure, I didn't pre-warn you about this question, but can you just enlighten us... There's a bit of a myth going around out there that all you turbo boys run super light. What sort of weight is your car? My car with me in it, mate, is 2,600 pounds. 
2600 on the start line wet. Yeah, on start line with me and it, mate. Yeah, and we've put a bit of weight in there. Look, the car can be lighter, mate, but we've got it, we've got it the way it is at the moment. It, it's at 26. It can be lighter, yeah, definitely, man. All right, and your next outing will be? My next outing will possibly be Jamboree on the, on the 30th of this month coming up. We'd okay. like to head up there. All right, excellent. Yeah. Well, just working around our work schedules and whatnot, being a fruit shop owner and, you know, among other things, it's just a bit hard to get out and get everybody together to go out, like, because it's a family, everyone runs their own jobs and businesses. Yep, a, logi so, yeah. a logistical nightmare, but uh, look, mate, I can only say the very best of luck from us and all of our ADRP TV listeners. We really look forward to seeing that 70 up on the board and uh, more importantly, just more fun, safe racing for you and your family. Thank you, mate. I hope we're going to find a home for these Promots and these Twin Turbo Promots. <laughs> that, that, that should get a few tongues wagging. All right, thanks so much for your time, Steve. I truly appreciate it. Anytime, Brett. Cheers. Awesome. Good night. Bye. Welcome back, race fans. That was a great interview and some insights into Steve Petrovsky's new five-second Twin Turbo Camaro. Now, let's talk about the upcoming events around Australia where you can get your drag racing fix over the next few weeks. Okay, race fans, there's plenty of drag racing all over the country in the upcoming weeks. Don't forget the Street Machine Super Nationals at Sydney Raceway this coming weekend. In three weeks' time, we've got the Max Crane 660 Series third and final round at the Sunset Strip in Mildura, Saturday, August 30. September the 6th, APSA are going to be up at Benarabi in Queensland putting on one of their great shows. And not to forget the Aeroflow round on September 13 and 14 next month, at, again at Mildura's Sunset Strip. Rounding out the end of the upcoming weeks is the Spring Nationals at Adelaide International Raceway on October 4 and 5, featuring Top Fuel, Top Door Slammer and Pro Stock Motorcycle along with the full Aeroflow field. So make sure you get out there and have a great time. So there you go race fans, there's plenty of drag racing in and around your local area to get out to and support drag racing over the next few weeks. Thank you again so much for watching this episode of ADRP TV. My name's Brett Hall and together with the ADRP crew, we look forward to bringing you some exciting new content and news in our next episode. Until then, take care.